This game is rated M and is intended for mature audiences. Okay, so... Previously on The Fruit of Grisea, it's just us and Michiru in the school, and we went on a couple of pretend dates with her, but were kind of real dates, but also kind of not. It's very confusing. The characters in this are, um... not particularly... healthy? <laughs> or normal. So, let's just continue where we left off, shall we? Building block. What's truth and what's fiction? The answer, this is fiction. Let's load to save. What's truth and what's fiction? Is this real or a dream? Where am I? Where aren't I? All of a sudden, many things feel unclear to me. Every once in a while, when I'm alone, I abruptly lose my bearings. Is it really alright for me to be here? To keep on living like this? My doubts gather into a dense mass of uneasiness and friends to swallow me up like a black hole. I came to this school under the pretense of being a student. But I'm still myself. No matter how carefully I smooth down my surface, the real me isn't going to just disappear. So when Michiru came to me with her pretend lover's proposal, deep down I was more relieved than exasperated. Now I have an excuse to live a lie. But this hasn't proven quite so straightforward. It's just a game, isn't it? Plain and simple. And yet sometimes the simplest things can be surprisingly difficult to fully understand. I don't understand why anybody would willingly be like, let's pretend to be dating. Like, what? Really weird. To be honest, I am more than a little perplexed at the moment. Y not just you, buddy. My real feelings seem to have gotten lost in some obscure fold of my brain, and I'm not having much luck finding them again. And I'm pretty sure she's feeling the same way. What's real and what's make-believe? Who am I and who aren't I? Again? Michiru has been dropping by my room more or less on a daily basis recently. Her objective, of course, is to drag me out on pretend dates. Although I agreed to play along with the intention of killing some time, my thoughts on the matter are gradually growing muddled and unclear to me. Why exactly do I keep humoring her like this? You could call this a mutual crime, I suppose. We're both play-acting feelings that aren't real, collaboratively per perpetuating a fantasy. <laughs> I guarantee you that she doesn't want this to be fake. Oh yeah! It's the cat! <laughs> cat Hat has returned. Mitra has finally gotten to the point of barging right in my room without even feeling self-conscious about it. But that's the product of my deliberate decision not to lock the door. Am I being too soft on the girl? Nothing. But isn't it about time... Isn't it about time we ended this relationship? But if I put it that way, it sounds like we're talking about a real breakup. There shouldn't be any need to take this game so seriously. This is... This is gonna go south real fast, isn't it? What's that supposed to be? Abandoning my flustered companion, I abruptly exit my room. Why does this feel so uncomfortable? It's like I'm living inside a man-made miniature garden with some cosmic voyage watching me from far above. You know why it's uncomfortable? It's because you've been pretend dating with her and then those feelings end up becoming real. That's why you don't do it. Well, one of many reasons. Ooh, yeah. What now? Look, I agreed to play house with you, but there are limits. It's true, he was. I opened my mouth to refute her, but I find myself at a loss for words. The snappy retort I was expecting just doesn't come. Hmm... Well, where do you want to go, then? Okay. Not necessary. I don't want to spend that much time. Okay. I do like her new outfit. While waiting for Michiru, I reflect on the fact that our classmates will be returning to the dorm soon. Once they're back, will Michiru revert to her usual tsundere state? Will we go back to the normal routine, as if this time we spent together never happened? Not that it's really any of my concern. It's her problem. Okay, well... <laughs> Darling, even for the sake of authenticity, I'm pretty reluctant to start calling you honey. This is very unhealthy. Hmm. <laughs> Easy for you to say. Darling, huh? 
最近ユージに付き合って結構歩くようになったから少しウエスト緩くなった She was already a twig to begin with I doubt there's been that significant a change in a few days Let's see here No, I did not. I looked at your waist and then at your cat. It's male. Because I looked. Rest assured, there was no funny business involved. When I was injecting. Well, it's hardly important. That's right, she doesn't really know we vaccinated the cat. Oh, she does know, never mind. Hmm? Did Chizuru spill the beans? I think the only reason you like me is because I'm literally the only guy in your life. Honestly, are there any words so hollow as a woman's just between the two of us? Pipe down. Come on, let's get going. <laughs> oh, I thought we were just gonna go to Chuck E. Cheese. Terrible cat sounds, yay! In a less than totally unpredictable development, the destination Michiru guides me to is the usual clearing overlooking the sea. Michiru, my friend, I'm going to be blunt. Why are you so attached to this place? Because it's a pretty scenery. Michiru slowly licks her lips over her tongue, then looks me straight in the face and smiles. Hmm? No reason? Even though you come here at every possible opportunity, you expect me to believe you have no reason for doing so. Uh, it's, it's a nice place. The grass is green, the sea is blue, the sky is blue. It's it's just a nice clearing. I have the feeling that today I'm finally going to hear about whatever it is Michiru's been hiding from me. Therefore, as the girl hems and haws, I simply wait patiently. So as not to let some crumb of truth blow away in the wind. I shield my ear with a hand, and I sit quietly waiting. <laughs> Oh yeah! You mentioned that you had well. Every any time best friends get mentioned, she goes crazy. Yeah. Michiru finally manages to just barely squeeze out the words. At the same moment, her cat gives a small cry. Hmm. I see. And is this friend of yours a new source of distress? <laughs> oh, something didn't end well between her and the friend. Michiru clears her throat with a little cough, brushing her previous comments off the table of conversation. I think everybody should have opportunities to be happy in life. Well, that's not healthy. The black cat repeatedly circles around Michiru's legs in, a search, in search of attention, but the girl's so caught up in her own little monologue that she doesn't even seem to notice. Alright, that's... okay. You should find ways to be happy without pretending to have a boyfriend, though. Hmm. Hmm. 
See, this is the kind of, like, dialogue in the game I actually like. It's kind of deep. When they're not talking about sex all the time. Hmm. It's hard to tell, because you seem to have, like, three different personalities. I put a hand to Michiru's cheek and feel the temperature of her skin. The girl before my eyes is, without a doubt, the Michiru I know. No more, no less. But it's also true that another Michiru appears occasionally in her place. I know basically nothing about the girl, not why she became this way, not what it means. And no matter how many pseudo-dates we accumulate, I'm not going to get any closer to that answer. There are some places role-playing can't take you. You're you, same as always. There's nothing strange about you. I think I've told you this before, but you worry too much. Yep. All of a sudden, Mitru's eyes are tinged with red. Uh-oh. Uh-oh, I don't like that question. I don't think there's a safe answer to that question. Hmm. I do think that going on pretend dates with a boy you actually like is, um, very stupid to do, indeed. I also don't think you're... Like, obviously she's not the best student, but I think a lot of that is just... <laughs> if her personality changes during class, she literally doesn't remember any of the stuff that was mentioned to her. Not really. No. Don't get too paranoid on me, alright? Take this at face value. You're fine just the way you are. Hmm... Michiru blinks rapidly, and a single large teardrop rolls down her face. No others follow. Aww. Yeah, it's clear she wants to really date us. So we should stop leading her along. Hmm. I see. But pretending has its advantages. No matter what happens, you can pass it off as a joke. Nobody has to get hurt. Yeah, but that's not real. Hmm. Well, I've got news for you, Michiru. After high school, most of the time, you don't really see your high school friends again. <laughs> you all kind of go your separate ways. Speaking from personal experience. As the words leave her mouth, Michiru slowly squats down to finally pet the black cat at her feet. Somehow the movement reminds me of an elderly musician lovingly attending their instrument. Hi, Proxima! Welcome to the stream! Hey, <laughs> we're playing Grisea again. <laughs> What a shocker! These pretend dates are not leaving her with the best mental state. I'm struck by the need to reassure Michiru. Setting aside my own complex circumstances and uncertain feelings, I want to do something for the girl crying in front of me. More than a little presumptuous of me, yes, but I simply can't bring myself to stay silent. You're not wrong, Michiru. Most things do come to an end. But that's... In that instant, her hand still moving through the cat's fur, Michiru changes. I swallow the words that were about to leave my mouth and carefully observe her. The girl before my eyes was no longer the Michiru I wanted to comfort. You again? You always show up at just the right moment, don't you? 
Michiru offers me a dry, unamused little laugh, then moves her arms carefully back and forth as if testing the parts to that compose her. This is weird. You, you know what? This Michiru personality is basically the only normal character in the game. <laughs> Who seems to have a grasp of, like, these people are insane. Michiru brushes her bangs out of her eyes, then tugs on the hem of her dress, clearly uncomfortable. I like that outfit. It's cute. I don't follow. そう。君はこの子を安心させたいと思ってる。そうでしょ。でもそれは一時期の感情に過ぎない。この子とずっと一緒にいることができる。ずっと離れないでいることもできる。I can't do any of those things. No. <laughs> As a matter of fact, I don't think Yuji can promise even one of those. Instead of answering, I squeeze my clenched hands a little tighter. It would be easy enough to object, but the girl has a point. Well, she she can't be codependent on one person. <laughs> oh, I guess that's the end of Michiru's route then. The girl claps her hands together firmly. The strangely dry second uh, sound hangs in the air for a moment. The black cat, alarmed, darts off into the grass. Michiru, my friend. Lacking a better alternative, I venture to call the girl in front of me by that name. You talk about the end like it's inevitable, but some things do last forever. Of course, the vast majority don't, but that's not a reason to give up looking. No matter how minuscule the odds may be, eternity does exist. It might take a borderline miracle to find it, but you can't deny it's there. Michiru twists her face as if she's taken a bite out of a particularly sour lemon. I've mentioned this before, this version of Michiru sounds like she has the same voice as Yumiko a bit. Hmm. The beautiful scenery, the pleasant wind, all of it seems to have abruptly drained of color and flavor. I can't find an effective response to her words. It's not good unless both of the people genuinely want to be in a relationship together. Hurt is inevitable in this life. I'll do my best, but I can't promise that. I have no intention of hurting her. But when you're that afraid of getting hurt... As the words are leaving my mouth, Mitru's body language slackens and the expression on her face changes. I instantly sense that the girl I know has returned. <laughs> Michiru grins brightly, but once she notices my grim expression, her, the smile quickly fades from her face. 
Her eyes full of uneasiness, she tentatively opens her mouth. It happened again. Her lips begin to tremble. It's obvious that the girl's genuinely afraid. She has the expression of a child who's locked down in a deep, dark well. So she's aware of this. Hmm. 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 Instead of answering, I silently wrap my arms around Michiru and hug her tightly. A very abrupt action on my part, to be sure, but it felt like the thing to do. Mitra's breath catches in her throat. I can faintly feel her pounding pulse through her skin. I can't find anything to say to her right now. I don't know what she's gone through or where these anxieties came from. I feel her suffering like it's my own. My emotions and hers seem to have rolled up into a hopelessly tangled me mess. To be honest, I don't have the first idea what to tell her. And therefore, therefore, guided by sheer instincts, I decide to come out and say something that's been on my mind for a long time now. This isn't the time for false happiness or hollow consolation. Right now, she needs the truth. Mitru, my friend, there's something I've been wanting to tell you. You mind? I don't know what I should say to you right now, so I'm going with this. Not sure. That cat. You're calling it Kitty Meow, aren't you? Well, you're god awful at naming things. <laughs> oh, funny sound Mitru is back. And shrill Michiru is back. I'll say it again. You are terrible at naming things. Well, that was rude. <laughs> Way to kill the mood. Weren't you listening to me? I didn't know what to tell you. So for the time being, I decided to say something that's been on my mind for a while. I thought it would at least be somewhat related to what she said. <laughs> this guy is dense as a brick. The timing might have been somewhat odd, granted, but they're sincere words. Try to calm yourself, alright? You really don't want to know me, Shiru. <laughs> Mishiru laughs, a hint of cheerfulness returning to her voice. Her deeply sorrowful expression gives way to the same straightforward smile I saw yesterday. I deliberately chose to play for time. As a temporary stopgap measure, I simply shifted the topic away from potentially problematic subjects. I don't know if that was the right decision, but I didn't want to make some half-assed insincere promise just to bring Mishiru momentary reassurance. It'd be easy enough to lie to the girl and make her feel like the problem's been solved, but that wouldn't be genuine progress. Might well backfire, in fact. That is true, you still did it in a weird way. And so I stalled her. I've put off the inevitable for now. I decided that a little more time would be necessary to resolve this problem, and now I have it. Ah, <laughs> uh, he's back. It isn't? But you're constantly calling him that. Nya, 
So if he was a dog, he'd be doggy bark. Hmm. If you're if the cat is attached enough to you that he's riding around on your head, I think he's there to stay. That's sad. I see. That explains it. But there's no harm in naming the animal. You should reconsider. Profoundly shocked by my proposal, Michiru hesitates. But honestly, she's so transparently attached to the animal that sticking with this purely functional non-name seems both awkward and pointless. If he does, then you've got cursed by a wizard. <laughs> Not impossible, but it strikes me as exceptionally unlikely. I don't know. Why don't I propose a name for the little beast? Let's see here. Hmm. Aha! Rommel has a nice ring. Uh oh, Toofy is back. Cuteness was a requirement? I see. I'm too used to thinking of names as purely practical signifiers, I suppose. A general. Hold on, woman. Rommel's no hole in the ground. Listen up, Rommel was an officer of the German army known as Desert Fox for... Are you hissing at me? Are you hissing at me? I see. If you're that opposed, I guess there's nothing for it. Alright, how about this one? Erwin. You, uh, that's funny, because I feel like Erwin is not a very cute sounding name, but that's just my own experience. Officially, it's somewhat longer. Erwin Johannes. Erwin Johannes Eugen Rommel. <laughs> Alright then, all joking aside, go ahead and name him as you see fit. How about Gigi? Mitru bashfully rubs her thighs together and speaks with a clear hint of embarrassment in her voice. Meowmo? It's shit. Hmm, how did you arrive at this name? Walk me through the thought process here. Not in the slightest. It was just the first thing that popped into my head. Mitru looks up at me, clearly looking for approval. In response, I offer her my honest opinion on the matter. Do it. A name can be anything, really. What matters is the fact that you're the one who named it. As of today, that cat belongs to you. He's gonna know. <laughs> That's a very cat thing to do. Well, I doubt it could care less. You're about to get a very blunt response. How many times are you going to make me repeat myself? When it comes to naming fiends, you are utter shit. <laughs> you said you wanted honesty, and I gave it to you. Well, whatever the name, there's no changing what's already been decided. Alright then, why don't we head back? Oh, oh. 
Things are not gonna go well when the other students return. Before I can even tell her I don't mind, Michiru clings to my arm. <laughs> Part of your world. Good for you. Collect enough of those, and maybe you can piece together a world that belongs to you alone. It's up to you to get. Uh, <laughs> it's up to you what gets included. Aw. Yeah. All right then, let's get going. Lord Nila, put it checkable. <laughs> That's how it works. <laughs> Sonic, thank you for the host. I appreciate it. Welcome to Fruit of Grisea. Home of the worst animal sound effects ever. <laughs> Doggone it, her voice actress is really good. Today, Mitru obtained a new piece of herself, but we can't forget that none of her problems have really been resolved. Still, the girl's begun to walk on her own two feet, if only within the bounds of a make-believe fantasy. As for myself, the words of the other Michiru still weigh heavily on my mind. If eternity doesn't exist, what can I do for a girl who wants something permanent? Easy enough to sulk and say it's all meaningless in the end, but with that mindset, we'll never even crack open the door to her world. <laughs> 